and addressed and spoke to the students, inspiring them. Uh, there was no violence, there was no intimidation from students, but it was clear that whenever the bounces came, in fact, their presence weren't needed. Nobody had stones, there was no weapon of any kind whatsoever. One can understand at a meeting like this, people are gonna speak in a way that, that, that expresses what is felt deeply. So I want to just come to yesterday. Yesterday near the fountain, uh, this is on Wednesday, and a few uh, academics, about four of us, went down, as I said, primarily to monitor, to see uh, uh, whether there's any violence from students, and I'm saying clearly, it's clear there was no violence, there were no threats of violence from students, but also to see how the security uh, uh, responds. And at about around 12.30 yesterday, some of these bounces came down, and it appeared quite clearly that these guys were ready for some action. And it was at the time uh, we was told students just sat down, they were singing, and that's all. That's, that's all they were doing. But after some while, and as I said, it, it, it appeared clear to me and to some uh, the others day that, that something was going to take place here. And then a few minutes later, they chased the students. That is when they started using pepper spray and, and sprayed people in their face. What I'm saying, it was clear that this was a violent reaction. The students were not violent. The students all the time, and I'm speaking about UJ, the University of Johannesburg, since yesterday, there was no violence. And as my colleague said, if, if yesterday was terrible, and we heard it was even worse at the uh, Duranfontein campus. So I just wanted to say that uh, the, we, we, we agree that the, that the request and the aspirations of the students are just and fair, and that we want to ask management Please deal with the students better. There is no need for these bounces. They've been the whole year. Uh, everything can be solved. Students do want dialogue with, with management. They do want to speak with management. Yes, we can also understand the concerns of management, but this concerns of students, surely uh, it is clear. Uh, uh, and we ask management to, to at least uh, to ask management uh, that, that these bounces be removed. It creates a climate of intimidation and it, and, and, it pro, and, and, and it prevents any meaningful dialogue. We need to have a dialogue between management and students uh, so that things can go forward. But it's going to be very, very difficult with the presence of these bounces and this type of uh, security and fear response. Thank you. What's your name? Uh, my name is Shaheed. Shaheed. Oh, my name is Shaheed Mati. M A T I. M A T H W E. Okay, my name is Tariq Tofa. I'm a lecturer in the Faculty of uh, Arts, um, uh, Design, and, and uh, Architecture. Um, I just want to give a, a general account of what happened at the, the Bunting Road campus uh, yesterday. Um, so the, the, the Bunting campus is one of the, the, the many UJ campuses and it's one of the smallest ones. So uh, yesterday was the, the first protest action that ever actually happened on this campus. So it's a very quiet little campus. Um, uh, yesterday uh, students started to, to protest, as I said, for the very first time. Uh, gathering in the gate, outside the gates, and a little bit inside as well. Those who were, uh, I'm just giving a general brief account, that those who were outside the gates were told, um, who, they were just singing and there, there was no, uh, uh, any prospect of violence whatsoever. <clears throat> um, the, the, the campus was closed off with guards and, um, and bouncers, let's call them. Um, so they were told that they needed to disperse in, within the space of five minutes or else their uh, tear gas would be fired uh, in the crowd. The students then dispersed and they, they, they entered the university through uh, other entrances and they, they gathered in the, in the center of the, the campus at the student center. Um, and they just tried to gather and uh, some of the student leaders tried to address them. Um, we then could see the, the, the strategies and tactics of, of the, the, the bouncers that were present. So uh, anyone who, who tried to address a student collective was, was isolated and, and they, were, they were told that um, uh, 
they just wanted to have a private conversation with them. Um, but then what in fact happened was, was they were being thrown into the back of, of, of police vans. And, and, and some were thrown in and some basically ran for their lives. Um, the, the bouncers then went into the crowd and, and tried to disperse them. Uh, and and they, they had canisters of pepper spray with them. The students then, in panic, uh, uh, ran out of the, the, um, the gathering and then they dispersed in the street. Um, the bouncers then followed them around uh, and, and pepper spray was used very liberally. We saw so many people that, that had been pepper sprayed for uh, no reason whatsoever. Um, they then sat down on the road, which has happened in campuses all across the country, just sitting down saying, we are peaceful, we're not, we're not provoking anyone. And again, this was met by bouncers going into the center of the gathering with pepper spray, spraying people and, and dispersing the crowd. And it just, uh, uh, and, and this was the pattern for hours. Uh, uh, students just tried to gather in a place um, and, and, and it's almost a kind of an assault from the side of bouncers. And, and this is a, a very quiet campus and, and the students were absolutely terrified um, of, of, of these people. Um, and they were being chased from one space to another. So that's a, a general account of, of what happened. People who were recording, even the media, this has happened in other campuses, we know we've seen the news in the week. People who were recording were point blank targeted, uh, sprayed in the face with pepper spray for absolutely no provocation whatsoever. And, and we are speaking as just people who are incredibly concerned. These are, these are children that sit in our classrooms and, and we teach them. And when we see the way that they are treated, where, they are, where no provocation is coming from them, it just uh, it, it's, um, it's, it goes against everything we are at this institution to do. Um, and, and, and because they are people that we teach, we relate to it on a very personal level. And it's absolutely horrendous. And, and they are terrified. And I saw this for myself yesterday. And if we look at and this, this Plenty of individual incidents we can speak about where we speak exactly how these things unfolded. This was what happened on, on, on the campus where I teach yesterday. But if we look at the broader picture, um, you know, the, when UJ entered the scene very late in, in, the, in this protest movement, and for, for literally for months, literally it was months, there was no uh, damage to property of any significant kind. It only happened much later in, uh, in 2016, in, in, at the end of February. So, the, 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 but even before that, there was, you know, the, there was a document uh, uh, compiled in December last year by two uh, UG academics, uh, Professor Jane Duncan and Professor Pierre Paolo, where they accounted the first few months of protest action at, at the university and accounted all of the, the, the abuses of the, the private security. And it's all in a document and was published by Right to Know. Uh, and that happened before any, any, any uh, uh, damage to property of any significant kind. Now, the, 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 it's, 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 I could see it even just yesterday, even though it was this timid crowd who hardly had, who hadn't even protested on the campus before. By the afternoon, people were really, uh, by, by being treated in this way, by continuously being clapped over the head by these huge bounces. Um, they, were, they were afraid, they were angry, and that was just one day. This has been going on for months, uh, for a year in fact. So it's, it's uh, the, the, the violence that has happened uh, from, the, from the management side, the, the bounces that they've employed, and from the student side. We, we abhor violence, we don't support uh, these violent measures in any way. But th there's a predictable pattern in this, that there's a, there's the, the way that they are brutalized is causing retaliation, and it's, and, it's, and it's created a situation that is incredibly tense and consistently volatile. And, and really, we need new kinds of strategies uh, to deal with this. It, people, everyone is saying they want dialogue. We really need uh, this kind of patterns to stop. We need these, uh, uh, the bounces are, it's getting worse. It's not lightning. The, the, the tactics are getting worse. The numbers are increasing. Um, we really need to rethink and have a new imagination about how to deal with these issues that is grounded in the, 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 the understanding of what the issues are, which everyone believes is just the call for quality free education, and really put forward a pathway and clear milestones and clear goals of how we're going to engage with these issues. Thank you. Uh, three, three questions, two very simple. Uh, were there police witnessing the private security um, yesterday when they were attacking students? The, the other question is, it's being accused that the students 
um, student leaders are being targeted um, and, and, and being arrested or, or detained uh, by the police or the security. Could you speak to that? And the third question, uh, the bigger question, what do you think the responsibility of the university leadership, the vice chancellors in particular, are in this instance? Um, <coughs> we understand, of course, many of the demands for free quality education is, is, is an issue uh, essentially for, for government. But um, inside that, what are your expectations of your, of your VC? Um, at Auckland Park campus yesterday, um, there we were members of the South African Police Service standing as witnesses. They did not participate in the brutalizing of the students, but they were witness to it. <coughs> in terms of, if I'm allowed to reflect from last year, uh, the 141 staff and students from UJ and WITS were arrested the first week of November, round about the 5th of November. After being released, those very students that very night when they were released were asking for open dialogue. They were not angry, they were not aggressive, they were asking for constructive ways forward that was taken directly to the VC to say, please, these young people are wanting to dialogue with you. <coughs> they wanted an open meeting. The response by management, which I was witness to personally, was to identify 30 students, uh, possibly student leaders. They knew them by name. They called them in one by one, did body searches, had a whole security regimen going before allowing them in one by one into Muddy Bang. Muddy Bang is the UJ uh, management uh, office sector or section where they had a closed meeting, nobody was allowed in, none of the staff were allowed in as witnesses or contributors. And that is what management is claiming as their attempt to dialogue with students. Thus far, we are still waiting for the documentation or transcripts of what took place in Madi Beng with those individually identified 30 students. And then in terms of the way forward, I do think parents, community leaders, traditional leaders and religious leaders should be consulted because as I said previously, I believe we do have the intelligence to go beyond these draconian uh, Neanderthal kind of approaches to our students. Um, these, sorry, these private security or bouncers are not trained in a constructive way. They come in and you can purpose, you can see they are purposefully intimidating and threatening, sometimes verbally, sometimes non-verbally. <coughs> in particular, there was one bouncer who was threatening me non-verbally, giving me head indications and with his eyes telling me to move, to get away, and standing with his hands in his pocket, jiggling his spray cans to intimidate me. And small as I am, I'm not intimidated by however big a person is. But the young ladies who were standing behind me, who are my daughter's age, who I had been engaging with before, they started verbally intimidating those young ladies. There were three. And those young ladies were just standing there making jokes. For about 10 minutes, I was actually engaging with them. Um, and I, had, I could see no reason why this gentleman was intimidating those particular students and telling them, uh, about how they must finish studying and get off campus and things like that. That was not the place of those private security. Uh, that was before security who were in full riot gear came on and started pushing and shoving and just telling people to get off campus. And when I asked them, I said, I'm a staff member, do I have to leave? The, the gentleman in full riot gear said to me, it's better if you go now, you can come back later if you want to. So I'm not sure what the strategy is, but I do believe that we have uh, more constructive and better equipped people than private security to help us navigate the way forward. It does sound like management isn't willing to listen. If you've raised these concerns about private bouncers since last year, is Professor um, Van Rainsburg willing to listen to the concerns of students but also lecturers? 
Then I have a question for the SRC president. Um, I see some injuries uh, that you suffered. Could you just uh, tell us how you got those? Is that from yesterday? Okay, yes. First, before, before I answer that, look, um, when we reopened on Monday after recess, I called for a consultative meeting with both the students and the UTA management. Um, just after that, they uh, sent me an invite to discuss the announcement of the minister. I refused to go to that meeting because I, I purely believed it was wrong for me to attend a meeting discussing fee increment without having spoken to students, getting their mandate on, on, on what is their views. And on, on the 20th of September, I wrote to the acting vice chancellor, Mr. Van Skour, that uh, can they please uh, allow us a process to, uh, to reopen and ensure that we consult all stakeholders who are affected by, by fees. They shut the door on us. They never wanted to come to our meeting. Actually, they sabotaged our meeting. They said, I never even told them about the meeting. They never came. Even after there was a clear signs of violence on campus. No, colleagues, uh, let's try to go down to students and hear them out. I found uh, six bouncers at the door waiting for me, saying I must have uh, an appointment to, uh, to engage uh, with the DVC of Student Affairs or, or, or the Vice Chancellor. So, so yesterday, yesterday, as, as, as my colleague said, there wasn't any form of provocation. I could, I could see that the bouncers were very ready because that's uh, long, long fat sticks. So the van parks on the corner, it's just uh, because it was on the front of us. It parked on the corner of the gate, allowing students to confront the bouncers, which was very wrong. I thought the van would be at the front of the, uh, between the bouncer and the students, in the middle of them. Because our, our agreement, first of all, with them, we have met uh, the MEC of safety uh, in Gauteng, and we agreed that they would not allow, allow bouncers to directly deal with students, any students. That is the role of the state, to ensure the safety also of, 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 of both the students and the management of the property. So we're shocked when students get attacked by, by bouncers and you've got police standing in their arms. I was the first to be attacked. Uh, they, they, uh, there is one bouncer who targets me every time when he sees me. Uh, and the fellow came to me, says, we are law. And, and they all came towards me, even before she could, uh, could start doing anything. They all came towards me. They persuaded me, they hit me with that big, uh, long wood stick. And I fell on the ground. As I fell, uh, they continued to pepper spray me, they hit me with those things. Then the students came to lift me from the scene. Only then, after, sorry, then there was, a, there was a, also a force of, of bouncers, bouncers at the back of those hitting me. Then they are throwing things to students. Students, uh, they responded with uh, stones too. But, but then it was never a case where students were going there to attack bouncers. So, so generally, Bouncers went there to ensure that they, after, after we arrived there, they attack us. Because there was, because there was no threat, there was no sticks or, or, or weapons. Sorry, can I just ask a question? Um, you know, we're talking about the fact that the when we were also targeted and the students were attacked and stuff. So we asked him for his uh, comment on that. And I'd like to hear your opinion as the lecturers and as the SRC on what he said. He said to us that um, he, he they deeply regret the actions of the private security, that there's an investigation underway and they're dealing with that. And, and, and um, these men basically overstepped their mark. As we explained to you, these guys were moving on just over. A media briefing currently taking place uh, at the University of Johannesburg. A member of the SRC a lecturer and uh, fellow academics briefing the media with regards to uh, private security and their attitude and behavior towards students. We have been hearing from the uh, SRC representative there talking us through his own
own personal ordeal with uh, these uh, security, private security uh, that is on campus and the way that they've been dealing with these students who've been protesting alongside hashtag fees must fall. We are going to take a quick break, but we will continue this uh, discussion and take a listen into uh, what is being further said here. But stay with us on Express Lunch. I'll see you after this quick break.